Speedrunners, modders, and game hackers are constantly breaking games open, allowing them to be completed faster and faster, what seems like every day. Be it discovering exploits to bypass areas in games that the developers didn't consider, exploiting glitches that completely break the game, and even influencing the game's memory to get to the end of the game in a ridiculously fast time. Now one of the best and most well-known examples of the last of those is seen in the any% percent speedrun category for Super Mario Bros. 3, where speedrunners have been able to chip away at the time to reach the end of the game to take just over 3 minutes. This is a quick beginner's look at the Super Mario Bros. 3 any% percent speedrun, let's check it out. So if you're new to speedrunning, an any% percent speedrun simply requires you to reach the ending of a given game as fast as possible, with typically little to no restrictions. Now these speedruns can be sometimes controversial, as some dweebs don't see this as real speedrunning, as it often employs various game-breaking exploits. Anyways, let's get to booting up the game. Alright, so the timer starts as soon as you hit the start button on the title screen. Then after starting up a new file and getting through the level select map, we of course start off with World 1-1. Here for the level itself, there's not really all too much to it. Basically just run to the right and jump when you need to in order to avoid enemies and obstacles, and you should be able to get through this entire stage in about 25 seconds. Now what comes next isn't actually World 1-2, at least not yet, as the next part of this run, at least for high level speedrunning, is actually dealing with how the Hammer Bro here moves on the map screen. Now normally the Hammer Brother can move anywhere from one step on the map all the way up to five steps if you're unlucky, and since you can't progress in the game while he's moving, this of course costs precious time. Now at worst, even if he does move 5 steps, this only ends up costing about 2 seconds, but if you're competing for the top slots of this category, every millisecond counts. As such, minimizing the time the Hammer Bro wastes can be crucial, especially since he does this after each stage, so the time waste will definitely start to add up. Thankfully, how the Hammer Brother moves, at least after the first level, isn't actually based strictly on chance, so if you really want to save the time here, you can actually manipulate the game. To keep things simple for the sake of this video, basically if you start the game on a certain frame, and then beat the first stage fast enough, you can manipulate how the game determines how the Hammer Brother moves to always make him move only one tile. Again, this probably won't really matter for you if you decide to start running the speedrun category, at least not until you get to the big leagues where every second counts. Anyways, now let's finally move on to the second stage. Again, just like with World 1-1, nothing all too crazy here, just run to the right, avoid enemies, and you'll blaze through the stage in no time at all. Now on to 1-3, where again we just run through the level, well, most of it. Here we get to do one of the most classic tricks in an NES game, but for those that haven't played much of this game before, there's actually a really cool little secret hidden away in this level. So if you come across white platforms like this in the game, if you hold the down button while on it for about 5 seconds, Mario will actually drop through and then will be behind the level for a short while. Although cool in its own right, this little trick isn't very useful throughout the game, except for the end of World 1-3 here. If you do this trick at the end of the stage, you can actually go behind the end of the level which then takes you to a secret bonus room, where Toad here will give you a treasure chest containing a warp whistle. But we don't use this warp whistle just yet, as there's another classic trick that we need to save it for, so on to the next stage we go. Thankfully this one is much shorter, as we don't even need to play through it in its entirety. Now if you don't know about this next trick, you must be living under a rock or something, as it's one of the most well-known secrets in retro gaming. Is it still a secret if it's well-known? I don't know. Anyways, as Raccoon Mario, we can fly up and to the right in this room here to find a secret walkway where at the end is a door, which takes us to another bonus room containing a second warp whistle. Now that we have two warp whistles, we can use the first one to get to the warp zone. Now unlike in other speedruns where you want to use the second whistle here to get right to World 8, here instead you actually just want to go to World 2 first and then use the warp whistle again to get to World 7. And this is because there's a certain stage we gotta get to that's absolutely critical for this speedrun. This stage is World 7-1, and here is where the magic really starts. 
Similar to the Hammer Bro situation earlier, here too you can manipulate the game to get a desired outcome, with that outcome here being to beat the game. We'll go over a shallow look at the specifics in a bit, but let me first just outline exactly what you have to do in this level. So after the level loads and you go through the first door at the start, there's quite a few things you gotta set up here, so bear with me and hopefully this makes at least some sense. So first, you have to stomp on this red Koopa, grab it, throw it against this pipe to kill it, and then quickly go up this pipe while the shell is still visible on screen. Then, after defeating the piranhas that are found in the pipes to the left here, we avoid killing this Koopa and go up the pipe more to the left. Then, once up here, you have to hit and kill this Koopa here by throwing it right into the right of this question block, and then you'll want to tail whip the Paracoopa here, right as the bottom of it is lined up with the top of the pipe to its left, so that the shell lands on it after being hit like this. Then next, we grab the Koopa that we skipped earlier, and then bring it down this pipe to the start of the room. Here, while holding the shell, you have to jump to the left of the screen to reappear on the right, while also holding the down button after jumping. If done correctly and you clip into the lip of this pipe, you will actually start to seemingly go down an invisible pipe. The regular level will start to scroll away and you will be sent into the dark void, at least for a little bit as after a while, several level tiles will start to appear in a very fragmented state. It basically starts looking like the Super Mario Maker levels that little Timmy likes to make. Anyways, eventually you will reach the end of the pipe and will regain control of Mario. And once you do, you'll want to quickly jump up and move to the left right under this block. And now for the main magic trick of this speedrun, you'll want to wait until the Koopa starts to wiggle out of Mario's grasp, and then after he damages you and falls off screen, you can walk over to the right, drop down, and bam! Just like that, you've reached the end of Super Mario Bros. 3, and that's time for this speedrun. So, the trick we just performed to reach the end of the game is known as a wrong warp. And although the steps might seem random, there actually is a rhyme and reason to everything that was done. In simpler terms, basically the game stores values for each enemy and object on screen based on their position as well as status. So by killing enemies in certain spots and having them land in others, you can actually manipulate the game's memory specifically to try and get this address. And this address is actually the one that basically tells the game to load to the ending cutscene. Now, I'm no computer scientist by any stretch, so this is a very simplified explanation as to why and how this manipulation works. But if you're looking to have a much more in-depth and technical explanation, there's an awesome video made by Retro Game Mechanics Explained that I'll have linked for you in the description. It's honestly a fascinating watch. I tried explaining it here in easier terms that I thought would be more understandable, so hopefully it made at least a bit of sense. The current world record in this any% percent category is held by Chikubi, and it stands at just 2 seconds over 3 minutes. Now there are certainly other categories for speedrunning this game that prohibit this wrong warp, or even using the warp whistles at all. And although some dweebs might write off wrong warping as not a real speedrun, Honestly, there's so much you have to set up properly for this to work that I think that anyone that can pull it off in a run deserves mad respect. And oh yeah, I went over the simple method of getting this wrong warp to work. There's actually a slightly different one used by high-level speedrunners. The idea is the same, but the way you deal with the Koopas is slightly different. This method is faster, but of course, it carries a higher risk. And that's speedrunning Super Mario Bros. 3 any percent. While you're here, check out some of my other speedrun videos, and be sure to subscribe to find your way back in the future. And as always, thank you all so much for stopping by, and I will see you in a bit.